second day of June, we've come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord. Shall we worship together? If you can stand, please stand.
brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. You led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, O sovereign Lord, you alone know. And then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones, and say to them, Sovereign Lord says to these bones, I will make breath, breath enter you and you will come to life. All together, I will attach tenders to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will bring you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. All right. Glory to God, truth. Right. 
morning at um, uh, 11 o'clock on June the 7th. There is a, an announcement in the bulletin that speaks to that. And all those who can, we, we've asked that you would come and support the family. That announcement is on page 15. We also would ask that you would, as we have asked on page 17, that you pray by name for someone you know that's in your personal space who is not attending this church or any church. Pray for them by name. Um, we'd like for each member to pray for three people. Pray them into a relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, the Retirement Committee, um, which uh, Dr. Pinker is heading up, their meeting, the meeting will be changed to uh, Tuesday of this week and not tomorrow. Tuesday of this week at 5 p.m. right here at the church. So I'll be committee chairpersons and those that would work, like to work with uh, Dr. Pinker and the uh, Retirement Committee, please meet here at the church on Tuesday at 5 o'clock. On Wednesday at noon and at uh, 6 30, our Bible study is having a grand time. Uh, we're studying chapter 3 of Acts, and we will invite uh, anyone who would like to come have a great meal as well as a great lesson and join us at 12 noon and again at 6 30 uh, for a Bible study. Our Festival of Grace is coming up. It's going to be on the 17th of, uh, of June. Uh, it is a time which we remember um, our members that were lost at Mother Emmanuel. Uh, not only just remembering uh, the, of the tragedy of that moment, but more importantly, the grace that was shown by the families of those who were affected. And so we celebrate the issue of grace. And we have a, a number of important speakers that are going to join us this year both from the uh, Jewish faith as well as the Muslim faith, and we're going to talk about the issue of love and bringing more love into our space, and we're looking to have special music and dancing all that night. So that's on the subject at 7 o'clock. Please put that on your calendar and invite others to come. Now, we just call to your attention all the other announcements that are in the bulletin from the summer youth camp to uh, uh, our Activity of uh, getting socks uh, to be donated for the homeless, and the fact that next Sunday is going to be Pentecost Sunday when we celebrate the uh, birthday of the Christian Church, and we're asking all that can to wear red on that day. Uh, is uh, red is the color of Pentecost, and uh, and bring others with you because we need to have. A very special and what we call unorthodox worship service as we celebrate the uh, birth of the church and the coming of the Holy Spirit. So please pay attention to that along with all the other announcements in uh, the book. Amen. And with that, uh, we will now uh, uh, get ready for the Salani Camp and then follow up on
wonderful rendition of that. Yes. 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 To God be the glory. Yes. Yes. God, we, we come in the name of Jesus to just yes. honor you yes. for that which you have done. Yes. From waking us up this morning yes. to giving us life yes. and to allow us to come into this place and worship at this moment. To you, God, we give the glory. Yes. Now, Holy Spirit, come. Come and dwell amongst us. Move, God, as only you can move. Speak, God, as only you can speak. Somebody needs to hear a word from you this morning. We ask this in Jesus' name. You may remain seated as I just read to you a portion of the scripture we saw this morning. The total text does come from the 14 verses of the 37th chapter. We printed over the six of the bulletin this morning. Where Ezekiel reports that the hand of the Lord was upon me. And he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley and it was full of bones. He, he led me back and forth among them and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, son of man, preacher man, prophet, can these bones live? Again, I, I said, oh sovereign Lord, you, you alone know. Then he said to me, prophesy, mm -hmm. preach to these bones, and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. It's the word of God thus far. Amen. This passage is one of the most dramatic and imaginative in the entire Bible. When we plumb the depths of this passage, it is one of the most meaningful passages in the entire Bible. It is about bringing hope to what seems to be a hopeless situation. It's about bringing life to a people that have been left for dead or who consider life not worth living. The scripture is a message for this age and for God's people now. This is a message for all of us who are hurting, down, depressed, or considered giving up. This is a message for you. All right. A valley of can you imagine it? A, a place where no life exists. Desolate. Barren. Foreboding. Spooky. Otherworldly. A place where death reigns supreme. All right. As far as one's eyes can see, there is nothing but death and desolation. How could a place like that even exist? I, I tried to envision what a valley like that would look like. Dry skulls and bones and dust and earth. A, a place where all hope is gone. Quiet, like a graveyard but without manicured moss. I, I, I Google the subject matter, Valley of Dry Bones, and I look for images that would depict such a place. And what I found were images, some of which we put on the cover of this bulletin. 
Those were paintings by artists who in their imagination laid out a valley of dry bones and what it might look like. You know, artists can be very creative and graphic. And what is on the cover of our bulletin is one artist's rendition on the top portion of the picture there. And, and then I looked for other images and I discovered that there's nothing more graphic than the real thing. Google provided photos of plains and valleys and fields in which there are human bones that can be seen as far as we can look. Mm. These are the most grotesque images. They, they were graveyards of the murdered who were purposefully displayed by monsters that created them for the shock value. And believe me, I, I, I was shocked. Mm. The, the, the caption says, killing fields. Oh, Jesus. A place where humans were rounded up by armies or militias, and then machine gunned down and left there to rot in the hot sun or in the jungle or in open fields where others can see. And those valleys still exist. Sometimes in the footnotes, the reader is told that these, the murderers had, had some of the victims to dig their own graves. And then they gunned them down. Other times they just herded the victims together and then machine guns them down. Men, women, and children. The, the Cambodian killing fields have a number of sites that collectively have more than two million people that were killed and left there by the Khmer Rouge, the Communist Party of Cambodia from 1975 to 19 to 1979. They arrested and eventually executed anyone suspected with connections from the former Cambodian government or who had foreign government connections. They executed professionals and intellectuals and ethnic Vietnamese and ethnic Thais and ethnic Chinese and Cambodian Christians and Buddhists, monks, were all part of the demographic they tried to eliminate. Two that, that's more than the entire population of the tri-county areas that, that we live in. And that was an example of one graphic killing field. But incredibly, in the history of humanity, there are others on every continent and in every century. Genocide and something called genocide the intentional killing of unarmed and disarmed persons by government agents. And their brutal killers still alive. One of them is Kim Jong-un, the leader of North Korea, the one that 45 loves. Yeah, 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 yeah. He currently has forced labor camps and concentration camps and is starving his own people. And he's been known to kill people forcing them to stand before anti-aircraft guns and obliterating them in such a way that their families could not recognize them. Chairman Kim has ordered even the murder of his half-brother. And we, who are African Americans, are survivors of genocide from the 1600s to the 1850s when yes, between 10 million and 40 million Africans died on the Middle Passage yes. between Africa and the Americas as they were trying to ship yes. black gold. Yes. And the indigenous people of Americas, we call them Native Americans. Well, we're standing in their land. Mm. And where are they? Yes. Yes. The, they're gone. Yes. We are standing on killing fields. Mm. And those of us that are my age or older, we were alive during the Jewish Holocaust, where more than seven million Jews and gypsies were slaughtered. And it goes on and on and on. There are valleys of dry bones, even in our own reality. But there's some other valleys of dry bones that we also see 
but we're also immune to because we don't see them in the right way. They're also in, uh, uh, so grotesque that these are urban killing fields uh, of people who are the walking dead. The, the, those are people who are currently unsheltered, homeless we call them, or living in temporary shelters, but they're in insecure living arrangements. They have also lost hope. And they are here, and they're everywhere. They are us, or they could be us. Right. Some are related to us. They are not space aliens. They are our own brothers and sisters yes. and cousins and sons <coughs> and daughters. And they're everywhere. Even on our own church property, possibly even last night. You've heard me mention it before. Oh, climb the fence just to find a place to sleep safely. They sleep on our property, sometimes in our parking lot, in the rear of the church. And a week ago, I came to church early one morning, there was a woman sleeping in the doorway of my office. Last week, a family came with a picture looking for a sister of theirs, saying, have you seen her? Well, we know she's somewhere around here. They showed me the picture, and it was an unpleasant encounter and heartbreaking. We, we see them. They're in the parks. They're in the central square. They're waiting to get into the library in the morning so they can use the restroom to clean up. They say that there are about 130,000 homeless folk that live in California. One quarter of all the homeless people in this country. That, that's almost the population of Oxnard who are homeless every night of the year. Oh, Jesus. They are hopeless and helpless. And there's a new category. I talked about it briefly last week. That there's a category called homeless college students. About 9% of the four-year college students and 12% of the community college students have no permanent place to stay. And so we took about a thousand pounds of food to Cal State Channel Islands, that's Oxford College, just a little bit more than a week ago, just to help those students make it through. They're part of the folk of the dry bones too. They're not sleeping under bridges or river banks, but they're sleeping in their cars. But then there's one more group of dry bones. Folks who are spiritually homeless. They, they, they don't live in the, the monk and the buyer. They, they don't use shopping carts. They, they don't even ask for handouts. They, they, they live in nice homes and drive nice cars and live in some very fine homes. But they also are in this valley of dry bones. Because as we read in Ezekiel, they, they their hope is gone, and, and, and they feel cut off. And, and, and that's what God was saying to this prophet as God was talking to Ezekiel about his people, the Israelites, who were living in the nation of Babylon, who had been in exile. They were homeless. They were no longer in Israel. They were helpless because they were covered by another government, and they were hopeless and they were godless. All right. And it was at that point that God was speaking to Ezekiel. He says, Ezekiel, how are these living dead? This, this valley of bones, how are they going to come alive again? And Ezekiel says, God, you, you smarter than me. All right. You know. Uh, how are they going to come to life? And God said, in essence, glad jazz. I want you, Ezekiel, to preach to these dry bones. Yes, yes, yes. Preach to them. Yes, yes. Again and again and again. Don't give up hope. Mm -hmm. Preach to these dry bones. Some of them are physically dead. 
dead or mentally dead or emotionally dead or financially dead or, or spiritually dead. Their lives are not looked up right, but you preach to them in season and out of season. But Ezekiel looking and says, God, do you see the skulls? Where there should be ears, there's just a hole. Where there should be eyes, there's just a hole. How can you preach to folk that won't hear and can't see? God said, in essence, you leave that up to me. You just preach. You just preach to the dry wall. But, but this is hard to that prophet and to that preacher and to this preacher. How do you preach to hard? Oh, uh, how do you preach to, to, to families that have been disappointed? How, how, how do you preach to folks who've already given up? How do you preach to empty pews? How, how do you preach to folks who are ready to be texting right now to listen to the word? That, that, that is why 
why the Bible has 66 books. And when we read through the Bible with, with clear eyes, we see how humanity goes in cycles. The things sometimes go up and sometimes they go down. There are people that have victories and they have defeats. But the bottom line is don't give up on God. If God is still there, that even in our history of the people in this country, our ancestors didn't give up. Yeah, that's right. When things got kind of hard, they didn't give up on slave in slavery. They didn't give up during Jim Crow. And we can't give up now. So, so our responsibility as preachers yes. is to just preach the word. Whether you're discouraged or whether you're not, just preach the word. Our responsibility as the people is to hear the word and to believe the word and understand that God is still in charge.
worship with our affirmation of faith on um, the Father, followed by our presentation of Christ. Let us stand for our
For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, with this bread and cup, we remember the life our Lord offered for us, and believing the witness of his resurrection, we await his coming in power to share with us the great and promised peace. Gracious God, you are holy indeed, the fountain of all holiness. Bless and sanctify these gifts with your Holy Spirit and bless us to your service that we may faithfully receive the unity and peace of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. All this we ask through your Son Jesus Christ, Amen. With him and in him, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all power and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever.